So tell me your vision of Pan Africanism. <laughs> that is, that so is for me, <laughs> uh, my ultimate goal and what I see for Pan Africanism is that people of African descent all over the world recognize that they are Africans, whether no matter where they were born, we are Africans, we are one people. We need to be working together, doing business with each other. We need to be supporting each other. We need to be, in other words, when they, we really see these George Floyd things happening, everybody on the continent should be standing up fighting against that because this is George Floyd is you. George Floyd is you. I would like to see a, a borderless Africa. <laughs> I don't like all these different countries big. And so I don't like that. I think those borders need to go away. Um, and we need to just be like we used to be. We, we had kingdoms. We didn't have countries. I think we need to be able to do trade with one another without all these different things. I don't think we should have to have visas and passports to go from here to there. I think that's an atrocity. Um, they don't have to do that in Europe. So why does the continent of Africa have to do it? This is just means to keep us divided and separated and to not get us to understand who we are. It's a big, big problem. Okay, now. Let's get the, the thing a little bit clearer. So uh, that uh, the whole of Africa should become one country or that we should be like um, different region. For example, in Nigeria is a country that is amalgamated, was amalgamated in 1914. And so we have uh, the predominant ethnic group like the Yoruba, the Hausa and the Igbo. And of course, each of these uh, group are enough to form countries of their own. In fact, right. they have been uh, a different big region of their own. For example, the Benin Empire have been a huge one bigger than what you have as Nigeria. Uh, right. So uh, even the Benin, what is remaining today as Benin can become a small country of its own, for example. Is that what you mean? Uh, or we are referring to the whole of Africa put together as one country? That's what I'm referring to. One united Africa. And uh how -huh. is that possible? I don't know that it is possible. I don't know the roadmap to that. I just know that in my mind, that's how things should work. And I and I'm connected with people who are working on the ground, you know, to unite our people. But again, there are so many boundaries in place. There are so many restrictions in place. And even that is political because people in the in the African Union, they're, you know, they're on the payroll from the European Union and not everybody wants to see that happen because if you're making a lot of money, you don't want that to be taken away from you. You don't want your position taken away. You're enjoying your lifestyle. So, I mean, everything in this world has become politicized when it really shouldn't be. And that's tragic because it hinders progress. Um, I think that what we should be doing is educating people on the benefits of Pan-Africanism, what that looks like. And so that this next generation can continue the work after we're gone, because I think eventually we will figure it out and eventually it will happen. It's probably not going to happen in my lifetime, although I would love for it to see that. I don't think it's going to happen in my lifetime, but I think as we take this message forward and raise up this next generation and they raise up the next generation, that eventually it's going to become a reality. And I think right now we have the momentum to do it because people there's an awakening happening. People are tired and they're fed up and they want change and pan-Africanism is the change. All right, yeah, I believe I believe, I believe, believe you. I really do hope that it become a reality. In fact, if it become reality today, it will, it will be the best thing that will ever happen in our in our. You're gonna see me too. dancing in the street, brother. I'm gonna be <laughs> dancing in the street. <laughs> of, course, of course, of course. But it doesn't mean that there will not be corruption anymore because we're talking of human no. beings. <laughs> exactly. All right, but do you think that it is even possible with, with the way things even are, even, let's even accept the countries the way they are. Do you think it is possible to work the way it is, or it is just impossible to function the way they are today as nations that have been uh, breaking up in Africa, 54 nations in the, the African Union, for example? Do you think it is structurally possible, or it is just not possible because we are broken down in this line? I don't think we can continue the way we're going. And I, the reason I'm saying that is because um, I think, and again, I don't live over there, but I think that these countries are in on the payroll of European countries. And even though they have a president and a front man, I don't think that president or the front man is the one calling the shots. And so in that sense, it's not going to work not for the benefit of our people. And it's gonna, it's gonna work for the benefit of somebody, it just won't be us. And we see that now. So in, in essence, what we are talking about is not just because of the land border, it's because of the way the system is structured. 
system correct the, the administration no is yes. that okay if that is the case it means that if you were to have a better system say for example uh in west africa where we are negotiating to have uh, one currency mm -hmm. uh, say we were to have one military okay one military not not only one military but a, a higher collaboration militarily then of course our border will still have it because even the united states for example you you have states no it's not it's not that what is happening in california is exactly what is happening in new york there are some right. differences no uh, in, in, but the in difference Nigeria, is example, we don't have to have a passport to go to California. Mm -hmm. We can do trade with California. We can do business with California. We can go back and forth to California whenever we want. And we don't have to go through all these restrictions and stuff. That's what you guys have over there. Mm -hmm. Because I'm trying to understand that if the solution, because, it, you know, there are, there, are, there are the opinion of some people who say, okay, let's just destroy everything and I start again from afresh. Or let's just go back to how we were before, like a thousand years ago, and start from there. You know, all these things, they, they really need to be explained in detail, you know? Uh, but now I'm thinking, I'm thinking that maybe what is wrong is no, is no, okay, the point that is wrong because the European, they, they, they sit down among themselves and decide to break Africa the way they want it. That is already right. wrong the way it is. But Correct. It doesn't mean that Nigeria as a country, for example, I'm using Nigeria because that is what I know better cannot function because it was made by the European. Mm -hmm. It is not functioning because the system, the way the system is structured is not functioning, but we can change the system. It doesn't mean by changing the system, we must change the border. So I'm looking at, we need quality leader. If we have quality leader, say in Ghana, in Senegal, a Senegal can still become very prosperous country, producing for mm -hmm. the people of Senegal, they collaborating with Ghana, collaborating with Nigeria, without necessarily breaking down the borders. So this is my question. Do you think it is possible that even with the borders that we have, even though it wasn't us that created this border, even though we were not consulted, but this is the way it is now. Within this border, we can still create prosperous nation. That is my question. I think that is possible, but I don't think it's likely. And the reason I say that is because if if um, different countries are in bed with different outside countries, right? And so the interests are different. And so maybe it's not beneficial to France for <laughs> that to happen. And so what is France going to do? They're going to put sanctions and do all kinds of stuff and shut it down. So I, I just really, for me, I believe that we need to look within and not without for our solutions. And so for that to happen... I believe that we shouldn't be looking at each other as Nigerians and Senegalese and, and Ghanaians and people from Benin and all that kind of stuff, because when you do that, that's still separatism. I'm different from you when the reality is you, we're not. We're all one people. And if we learn to look at each other as one people and come together as one people, do business as one people, then we're looking out, treating each other like family, and then we're going to do, do do what's right and not necessarily be selfish with what we're doing because what I see happening and and in, in our even in our import and export deals, people say people on the continent say this to me all the time. Well, you know, I'm a Nigerian and we're different from say this group over here. And but what's in it for for Nigerians? Because Nigeria has to be first. They they're not looking at it as this is going to be beneficial to everybody involved. They want it to be beneficial for their little group only. That to me is problematic because you you want to do it's great that you want to do something good for you. But what about these other people? They they deserve good things also. So why can't we work out a deal that's beneficial? It's a win win for everybody and not just a win for you. And so you're taking trying to take advantage so that you get all the resources and these other people suffer. That's not OK. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not OK to take advantage of other people. Yeah, I completely agree with you. But now I am just thinking on. Say, for example, looking at the countries in, in the America continent, no? um, we can say that um, Brazil can become a very powerful country mm -hmm. if they have good leader and everything all the same. No? The economy will say everything all the same. No? <laughs> you know? uh, they, of course, their neighbors can also be successful if the things are mm -hmm. run away. Because I don't think that the game really necessarily has to be a zero-sum game. Right. 
we can have a positive sum game in that everybody can actually benefit. The resources that is available for us, they are not limited. It is only limited no. in our head. But really, not limited, but the people limited. that have the resources are the ones that's calling the shots. And so I mm -hmm. think the system that we have right now, so we have big, big boy players, right? Like the United States is a big boy player. They're able to put sanctions on these smaller countries because they're smaller countries. They're able to punish them when they don't get in line and do what they're told to do. Look what happened to Zimbabwe when Mugabe tried to stand up. What did they do? To starve the people. That's why I'm saying we need to come together as African people. That never should have been allowed to happen.